Hello, and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Colin, and today I'm watching First Crusade Part 2 of 2. And uh, this comes from Epic History TV. Uh, so if you haven't watched Part 1, go back and watch that, and then uh, uh, come back to this one if you feel so inclined. Um, but yeah. So, uh, First Crusades. So I, I one thing I, I learned uh, in the last video that was actually not in the video, but something I, I was just curious to, to look up, just how many Crusades there were. I don't remember if I uh, actually learned this uh, or not when I was learning about the Crusades back in the school days, uh, but there were eight in a matter of like two years, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, um, or 200 years. Sorry, not two years, 200 years, I think. Um, yeah, that's a lot of crusades. Uh, certainly a lot more than I than I thought there were. I thought maybe like three, two to four, you know. But uh, yeah, I guess we're just getting started. So uh, hopefully at some point, Epic History TV does uh more series on the other uh <laughs> seven crusades. Um, yeah, because that would be very interesting. So uh, if you haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, with that being said, let's uh, dive into part two of the First Crusades, shall we? I got this share screen here, and let's go into it. October 1097. Two years had passed since Pope Urban II preached a crusade to help the Byzantine Empire in its war against the Seljuk Turks. Now, the First Crusade had reached the great city of Antioch. It was the last major Turkish stronghold, standing between the Crusade and its goal, the holy city of Jerusalem. But Antioch was virtually impregnable, with its citadel atop a 1,000-foot mountain and too large to encircle. The giant crusader army could only camp outside its walls and pray for a miracle. But that winter, they ran out of food. Horses, men and camp followers began to starve. A trickle of supplies continued to arrive by sea, mostly from the Byzantine-controlled island of Cyprus and they defeated an attempt by Radwan of Aleppo to break the siege at the Battle of Lake Antioch. But the Crusaders' situation seemed hopeless. Morale fell as deaths and desertions rose steadily. In March, a Crusader fleet arrived with much-needed reinforcements and supplies. Finally, one night, Bohemond of Taranto and 60 of his men scaled a tower on the southern wall, whose commander had been bribed. As dawn broke, Bohemond's men opened the city gates, and the Crusader army poured in. They massacred soldiers and civilians alike, while desperate Muslim survivors fled to the citadel. So. They were able to get in because they bribed the commander of of this uh citadel here. I wonder if if uh you know given technology and how I guess kind of easy it would be to get away with something like that if if that was more common back then than maybe it is today in a uh, modern warfare with uh the limited uh privacy that that we now have um so yeah i wonder i wonder if uh if it was more common back then i guess is is my question um but yeah what a shame <laughs> which continued to resist all attacks antioch had fallen but now a giant turkish army was assembled under the command of kur buga governor of mosul First, he attacked Baldwin in Edessa, but abandoned his siege after three weeks and marched on Antioch. The 
Crusader army was exhausted, starving, and now trapped. They could expect no help from the Byzantines. Emperor Alexius, busy securing his own territory in Anatolia, had received false reports that the crusade had already been destroyed. Fearing a Turkish counterattack, he withdrew to Constantinople. Then, inside Antioch, a relic was miraculously discovered. Supposedly the Holy Lance thrust into Christ's side at his crucifixion. And the Crusaders' faith in their holy mission was renewed. Uh, what was that called? What did they call it here? The... Renewed. And the Crusaders, they discovered, supposedly the Holy Lance thrust oh, into Christ. I'm just like thinking of uh, the movie Constantine from what, like 2005 or whatever? Because uh, one of the, the, what was it? What do you call it? Uh, the um, crap. It's a, it's a movie term. Um, anyway, basically the, the prop that everyone's after. Uh, in the movie, you know, um, was this blade that was made from from the tip of the spear that pierced Christ, supposedly. Uh, I cannot think of it. Anyway, I have a terrible memory. If if you've if you've watched a few of my videos, you you know, like this is usually what happens. I I have a recollection of something. And I try to recall it, and I just cannot for the life of me. I think I think that makes up a, lo a lot of uh, the time in these videos, so I apologize for that. But let's, uh, in that spirit, let's keep going, shall we? Christ sighed at his crucifixion, and the Crusaders' faith in their holy mission was renewed. Although heavily outnumbered, the Crusaders decided to meet the Muslim army outside the city walls. With the zeal of religious fanatics, seeing visions of saints and angels, they charged the Muslim army, which turned and fled. Kur Boga, accusing his commanders of treachery, possibly correctly, set fire to his camp and withdrew. The Muslim defenders in the citadel, witnessing this stunning victory, quickly surrendered. In summer 1098, Fatimid forces from Egypt captured Jerusalem from the Artukid Turks. Al Afdal, Grand Vizier or Chief Minister of Egypt, saw the Seljuk Turks as his greatest enemy, and even tried to make an alliance with the Crusaders against them. But the Crusaders were not interested. Instead, they spent five months around Antioch, foraging supplies and arguing among themselves. Stephen of Blois and Hugh of Vermandois had already given up and returned home. Now Bohemond of Taranto claimed the former Byzantine city of Antioch for himself, breaking his oath to Emperor Alexius to return such territories to him. Bohemond argued that the Emperor had broken the oath first, by failing to help the Crusaders during the siege. Divisions deepened after Bishop Adhemar of Lepuy died from illness. He'd been the Crusades' spiritual leader, and a unifying presence on their council. Meanwhile, Crusaders carried out a brutal massacre of civilians at Ma'arat al-Numan. Pressure from the... I guess it's like, I think I was talking about it in the, in the last video of, uh, they were talking about the reasons why these men were going to uh, fight in the Crusades. Uh, and part of that was that they were convinced that, you know, by fighting uh, to reclaim this land, this holy land for the Pope, for Christianity, uh, that they would be buying their way uh, 
into heaven and that doing this would forgive their violent past, the way that they live their lives. And it's just like acknowledging that the violence is bad, but if you do it for this reason, it's a okay. Um, and I guess what, you know, it's just, I don't know if it's, it's like an obvious kind of thing or, or like a, I don't know why, why, why I'm bringing this up, but just like the idea that they're going on this holy quest and then on part of the journey, like I, I get it, like it's, it's war, you're going to be fighting other people who are, want this territory, but then you go into a town full of just people, citizens, and you just destroy them all as well. Um, ransack the town. Uh, you know. I don't know. People do crazy things, huh? I think that's I think that's why I'm like, why am I even saying this? It feels so obvious. Like, it, if you look at history, yeah, people do insane, cruel, uh, just wild things. So, I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep going. Mass of ordinary crusaders forced their leaders to put aside their differences and march south towards Jerusalem. Except for Bohemond, who remained in Antioch, where he declared himself prince. As the crusaders entered Fatimid territory, many local rulers offered up money and supplies to avoid violence. Other villages had been abandoned. As the Crusaders neared Jerusalem, they found wells poisoned, trees cut down, and mm. animals driven away. And now, when they say that they poisoned the wells, um, if you know, let me know in the comments, but what exactly, how exactly were they poisoning the wells, and was the poisoning permanent, or something that would clear up over time? Because I would think, like, I get it, you know, you want to slow down your enemy, uh, limit their resources. Um, but I would imagine that their goal would to be to ultimately to go back home to these places and use those wells. So, I don't know. Or would you be able to just dig up another well nearby using the same... Water source? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't understand exactly how groundwater works, and uh, if you poison one area, I, I assume I assume it probably infects the entire area. Would be my guess. It's all connected, right? So, but yeah, was it a permanent poisoning? How did they poison it? Is is I guess the the main question I'm I'm getting at. And if you know the answer, let me know in the comments. Let me know. Anything that could help the Crusaders had been destroyed. On the 7th of June, 1099, the Crusaders got their first sight of Jerusalem. Many fell to their knees and wept with joy. But they faced a serious challenge. They were now reduced to about 12,000 fighting men, not enough to encircle the city, and they were running out of food and water. Jerusalem would have to be taken by storm. landscape meant the Crusaders had no timber to build siege engines, and on the 13th of June their first assault with a single scaling ladder was easily repulsed. Four days later, six Genoese galleys arrived at Jaffa, where they were soon blockaded by the powerful Fatimid fleet. So the sailors took apart their ships and carried the timber to the siege at Jerusalem. The Crusaders foraged more wood from the surrounding land, enough to build two siege towers. These mobile wooden structures would be wheeled up to the outer wall and allow the Crusaders to directly assault the enemy battlements. 
One tower was stationed with Raymond of Toulouse's forces in the southwest. The other was with Godfrey of Bouillon's troops to the north. On the 8th of July, seeking God's aid in the impending assault, the entire crusade walked in procession around the city, finishing with a religious service on the Mount of Olives. On the night before the attack, Godfrey suddenly moved his siege tower to a less well-defended section of the city walls. I guess another kind of like interesting aspect of the Crusades as well. But I mean, I guess this is just the nature of re religions, I guess. But just the fact that they are all Abrahamic religions, right? So they supposedly all worship the same one true God, right? And they all vehemently believe that what they're doing is what God really wants. So who 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 actually truly speaks with God? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I guess that is a conflict that has existed throughout all humanity, really the most part, since religion has been around, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Will it ever be solved? I think is, is kind of where my, my brain is going. Could it ever be? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I'm also wondering, too, uh, where are, during this time, where are the uh, Jewish populations? You know? Because uh, I know there's a, a history there as well, and I I imagine that they were probably uh, scattered at this point. But did any did any Jewish people still live in or around Jerusalem, even in like if they had to keep their identity uh, secret? Maybe I don't know. Um, but yeah, what were they up to? during this time because it's just it's the muslims and christians at this point right um so i don't know let me know if you, if you know in the comments if you have uh you know of a, a good video that might discuss that as well what were they up to during the crusades yeah maybe maybe that's covered in, in one of the further like later of the other seven crusades i don't know uh it's been a long time since i've reviewed anything of the crusades and again, I didn't even remember that there were eight in total. Uh, so, yeah. Let me know in the comments. The final assault began on the 15th of July, 1099. In the north, Godfrey of Bouillon's troops managed to fight their way across from their tower onto the city walls establishing a bridgehead. Soon they were inside the city, and overcome with religious euphoria and pure bloodlust, they went on the rampage, butchering soldiers and civilians, Jews and Muslims, women and children. It was an orgy of the sound effects of the screams. slaughter, Jesus. barbaric, but not unique for the age. Not the First the Crusade age. had secured oh. its goal in the face of overwhelming odds. And just four weeks later, at the Battle of Ascalon, the Crusaders smashed a Fatimid relief army sent to recapture Jerusalem. Most Crusaders, their vows fulfilled, soon returned home to Europe. Only around 300 knights remained to defend Jerusalem under Godfrey of Bouillon now named Defender of the Holy Sepulchre. The man who'd set these great events in motion, Pope Urban II, did not live to hear the news that Jerusalem had been taken. He died just two weeks after the city's fall. Hmm. The new Crusader states that emerged, the Kingdom of Jerusalem, the County of Tripoli, the Principality of Antioch, the County of Edessa, lived on precariously. 
surrounded by enemies. And the Muslim world would not remain so catastrophically divided for long. Soon it would unleash its own holy war against the Crusader states, turning the Holy Land into a battleground for almost two centuries. In response, more Crusades would be launched from Europe, but none would ever match the bloody, spectacular success of the First Crusade. Research and artwork for this video comes from Osprey Publishing's extensive range of books on medieval history. Every Osprey book examines a particular battle, campaign or combat unit in authoritative, meticulous detail. And with more than 3,000 titles, they cover everything from ancient warfare to modern conflict. Visit their website to see their online catalogue. We'd like to say thank you to all the Patreon supporters who made this video possible. If you'd like to find out how you can support the channel and even get to vote on future topics, please visit our Patreon page by clicking the link. Alrighty then. So I guess maybe that's the reason that uh, they haven't done one so far yet uh, on the uh, other seven crusades is because they weren't quite as gruesome and horrifying, uh, supposedly. Um, but at least, you know, uh, I think wrapping up uh, a few of them all, all in one video could be beneficial. I'd be interested in that. Um, but one thought I was I, I had was, so, and uh, at least I didn't, like, hear it if they if they mentioned it but so they they the pope you know uh wanted to have control of of jerusalem holy land i get that uh but was the ultimate goal just to have control over it or were they planning to like i guess colonize it for lack of a better word like send more people uh in those areas to live um yeah, because that would make sense to me. You know, you well. Otherwise, what what is the the purpose of of controlling other than I guess I, I don't know, to to control, <laughs> you know, in the name of your God, which I guess is is why they do anything, right? Uh, yeah. If you know the answer to that, if 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 you know if if have you have if you have more insight on uh, what their ultimate goal was with with uh, Jerusalem and those other surrounding areas like they mentioned at the end there uh yeah yeah thanks for coming along this journey with me i hope you enjoyed and uh be sure to like share and subscribe as i say at, at with most videos anywho <laughs> you know what to do uh so yeah thanks for watching everyone and uh i'll see you the next one